Early bird gets the worm. I'm here with my buddy Chad. We're fishing late October, targeting king salmon. I'm going to share with you three of the top techniques we do to target and catch these big fish. Oh, that didn't take long. Oh, gone. Dang it. Oh, I couldn't catch up to him. Wow. My drag was so tight, I couldn't get to it in time. That guy smashed that. Third cast. Whoa. Okay. You want to make sure your drag is set properly. You know, so these fish, they do have a ton of power and they run really, really fast. Um, if your drag's too tight, they either break the line or pull the hooks out. And that's what happened to me. My drag was a little bit too tight. That fish came right at me. I was trying to pick up line. And the first time it turned and ran, um, you know, it just pulled out. So always, always make sure your drag is. You want it fairly stout, but you want to make sure that it will slip if a bigger fish decides to run, especially when you're dealing with big current. Okay, so one of the retrieves that works really good for me with this is just a stop and go. So, you know, accelerate the wheel, you can actually feel the bait moving, stop. Now just repeat that. A lot of times, just that pause, they run into it. it. Might be a fish following it, but that's an easy one. And the other one that's really good, it's just a real basic steady retrieve. So you throw it out as far as you want, count it down one second, you know, 10 seconds. You know, obviously try not to snag on the bottom and then just wind it straight back. You'll feel it and watch it. And I'm running straight 12 pound fluorocarbon on there and then on the end I always put a heavier leader because these salmon have big canine teeth and they got real strong jaw bones so this this here this section here in my hands from the lure down is 22 pound and I've just attached that with a simple triple surges knot or you can use a two-way swivel to connect these leaders Oh, I just got smashed. What? 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 Got hit again. Absolutely smacked. You could feel him just run into it. Boom. How did I miss that? Oh, I literally just got hit again. Meat on my hook, I'm shaking right now. Like vibrating. Hey, nice beaver. What's going on, buddy? Let me check him out. Oh, I'm snagged. Oh, I let my lure sink. Okay, so I just broke off. I was using that rattle bait. And I wanna take a second and talk to you about the setup that I'm running here. You can use a spinning rod or you can use a bait caster. Doesn't really matter, but I do think it's really important. It's gonna help so much if you use a rod that's longer in length. Like you want something that's eight and a half, you know, to 12 feet in length. It helps a lot with casting further. It helps a lot with your line control. It also helps wear the fish down when you're fighting them, when you hook them up. So consider the longer rods. You can use anything you have, but I'm running an 11 and a half footer. Um, you know, eight and a half to 12 foot again is what I really like to do. On my bait caster, so on my, on my reel, I'm running straight 12 pound fluorocarbon. I, what I wanna always do when I'm doing this is I put, I put on a leader and what I'm using is I'm using 22 pound fluorocarbon and I'm just going to put a small section of it and you can use a couple different ways to attach it to your main line so again I've got 12 pound right to my reel and I'm going to put a small piece of 22 pound on and what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a triple surgeon's knot and it's a super easy knot I'm going to show you right now but I just lay the line over top 
the 12 pound and the 22 pound over top of each other and I make this little loop. So I've got this loop right here now. You know, I can see that I've got the tag end coming from my 22 pound and then I have the other end that goes to my reel which is the 12 pound and I'm going to reach inside point towards me and I'm going to grab this and pull the tag and the leader both through once twice and three times okay and this is this is important when you pull down you want to grab all the pieces and take your time and pull it and you're going to see it's going to form oh, this will show up it is going to form a nice little figure eight when you do it right so you cinch down everything make sure your knot is really strong i test it all the time and then i'm stuck with these two tags so i'm going to trim those two tags as close as i can You know, again, if you want, you can use the two-way barrel swivel to connect it. Um, that works too, but that you can't reel into the eyelets. Whereas this, with the triple surgeon's knot, this little knot that's on my thumb there, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that I, I'm able to reel into the eyelets if I have to. So the main reason for this heavy leader, you're probably asking, why does he have a piece of 22 pound on? Is these Chinook salmon, they have big canine teeth. They have really sharp, bony jaw bones and plates, and they like to roll. So when they hit the lure, and they roll, it's simply to protect your line from breaking because a lot of times the 12 pound, it's pretty heavy, but it's, it's not uncommon for it to like, you know, drag across their teeth and then it breaks off. So try running a small piece of heavier line, 20 pound, 25 pound, 30 pound. And then, you know, that last, well, I lost one on, on a rattle bait. They got a ton of noise and these salmon, a lot of times I think they'll hit the bait out of like aggression. They're not necessarily feeding or maybe they are feeding, but you know, baits like this, they love the bright colors, you know, greens, chartreuse, oranges, fire tigers. Um, but I've been casting the same lure for a while now in that same, same pool behind me. And I'm going to switch up. I'm going to put, you know, a fire tiger. I think this is a big O, but again, it's got rattles. It's got a ton of wobble and they love this stuff. So this stuff is not just for bass and for walleye. This stuff is amazing on, you know, steelhead and brown trout. In this situation, we're gonna to try to connect with another Chinook salmon. was on for a sec. Oh, I'm gonna switch. I throw on that big, no, look at that big O. Chad and I are gonna go. So this plan Chad will throw out and we'll hook up with 240 pounders. Okay. And we'll land them, we'll both look at the camera. And then we'll go for, what did you say you wanted? You wanted to go for Big Macs? Yeah, Big Mac. Do they have a vegan Big Mac? They don't have a vegan Big Mac. It's in a Y stick, I'll be all set. Got one, got one. Oh yeah, that didn't take long. I switched the float. I think that's good, just change it up. I threw the lures for a while, I kept getting whacked, I kept getting fish to come up and smack it and I switch to the float and I'll show you the setup after there we go oh that didn't take long at all really wish I had the other camera going I don't awesome 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 we're going for the crab we're gonna grab this or am I gonna grab this oh beauty well, that's okay. Here we go. So I think that's going to be the plan. We'll just mix it up. We'll go from throwing different lures and then let them rest with that. Switch back over to these. These are, these are eggs that we're going to show you how to treat them. And there's a couple different products we use to do this. And they seem to like it, clearly. Man. And this is not a big one, but man, are they ever strong. That is such a strong fish. Okay. 
Let's see if I can grab this now. I got it. I got it. Cool. There we go. First one. I'm going to show you what I'm using. That is... Oh, I gotta get pliers. This fish in the water, scales are wet, he's okay. Awesome. There he goes. Sweet! So that's pretty cool. I gotta retie. So I'm gonna show you the setup. So what I've got is I've got a slip float. I've got a bunch of split shot. I wanna make sure that my float is properly weighted and what I mean by that is watch this here when I put it in the water you know you could see no it's not going to sink you can't hold any more shot and anything that touches it is going to pull it under so bobber stops up top and you could put these at any height you want just simply by sliding them up and down the line so if I want to fish it 20 feet I can if I want to fish it five feet no, that's up to you, so you have to experiment with that. My main line, I've got 15 pound right to my reel, and all the split shot, like I said, two-way swivel, and my leader is lighter. This is 14 pound fluorocarbon, so I've got monofilament on here. I do like the stretch, and again, I find it is a huge advantage to use a longer rod. This is an 11 and a half footer. You can use eight and a half to really 15 feet in length, but it does make a difference. It helps with your line control when you're moving the line off the water. It helps cast these longer leaders, and it also helps wear those fish down. It acts like a big spring, helps protect the, the leaders and keep the hook in place if you are using a lighter leader, but I'm not. Again, 15 pound main line, 14 pound leader, and I had a number one odd hook two split shot patterns that have been super effective for me on any of the Great Lake rivers that I've fished before. The first one when I'm float fishing is called the bulk shot pattern and it's really simple. You literally take all of your split shot and you mash them in one section typically on your main line just above your two-way swivel or where you connect your main line to your leader. So this is a really good pattern to do when you're dealing with either a short deep pool and you want to get down quick because it, you know, it's quickly going to get down. It's going to keep it down there. Or when you're dealing with heavy flow, like we have behind us here, the other pattern is simply staggering your shot and spreading them out evenly on your main line so that they're in the same sequence as, you know, the buttons you'll find on your, your dress shirt. So they're going to look you know, something like this. So you have them staggered, relatively even, all the way up and down your main line, under your float, right up until that two-way swivel. Those two split shot patterns have worked really well for me anywhere I fish for King Sand, anywhere I've done float fishing and any of the tributaries that connect to the Great Lakes. My last row bag, you know, they only last so long, so you have to change them, but, it, but it's, it's really easy. You just take your, let's see if you can see that. You take your octopus hook, I have here and what you want to do is you got your row bag here and this is tied in that scarf that netting so it gives you a place to easily just you know gently put the hook just through the mesh you know and you can go through once or twice some people will go through the knot you know but that's ultimately all you have to do so we talked about how we treat the eggs and hold on just hold it there for a second so this is one of the one of the products that you can buy it's called Procure um, comes in different flavors, different colors, you know, and there's another one that Chad has, but you know, this is, this is the stuff that you get, you know, if you have eggs like this and we just pour it all over the eggs and then we put it inside the Ziploc bags and it's going to get all this juice and all this liquid. So you just want to put, you know, a good amount on your eggs, spread it out. And then once you put it inside the Ziploc bag, you can really start to work them around inside the eggs. This stuff, this stuff will stain like crazy, especially on your fingers. And so you want to do it like on a surface that you're not too worried. It does clean up pretty good, but, and then from there, once you've got a good amount on, you're just going to open up your plastic bag or you can put them in a, in a container, a reusable container, whatever you want. And put a little bit more inside the bag. That's always good add a little extra make sure the eggs are totally coated that's what you want to do 
And then, you know, just simply shake them around. Make sure that all the eggs come in contact with that, with that dye. And whatever, whatever's in that, whatever's in that probe here, you know, and when you do this with fresh eggs, um, it's really good stuff. And for whatever reason, they actually eat it, you know. So there's another style of fishing, you know, that we do with the flow fishing. And we use, you know, big chunks of that treated eggs on a, a loop knot under the float. The big man's got one. I'm gonna come help you. Look at you. So we literally just did these eggs, right? So that's that, that's that cure on there. And then Chad took a chunk of it, took his scissors, cut a chunk, lobbed it out there, hooked up. Nice work. Maybe it'd be better to go over there. Come on down. You want help or you? Oh, I got him. I got him. That's awesome. Look at that. Woo. So that's what we're talking about. Those males that got those big kipes. I talked earlier about using those heavier leaders. Check out the canines on that guy. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome looking fish. I'm gonna put it in the water. We're gonna get a couple pictures for chat. Whoa. Oh, nice work, sir. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that's a good fish. Really good fish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Want me to get players? Socked it to him. He wasn't coming up. You know, do reverse grips, you see its tail, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's right. Sorry, bro. Gone! She gone! That sucks. Oh well, no underwater for that one. <laughs>